Today I want to show you how we can create and animate a scoreboard or a level summary using these nodes and also tweens and it looks something like this. So let's get started. So first things first, we're going to be setting up our nodes and what I have here right now is a new Godot 4.2 project. I have a sound which a link will be in the description and we're going to create a new user interface scene. We're going to save this called main and set it as the main scene. We're going to change the root node to a center container and then we're going to add a VBox container which will hold a label which will be the title of our scoreboard and it will also house a panel container where we will be storing all our labels that we will gonna that we are gonna animate. Uh, and apart from that, this container also has a button because we want the player to continue once the animation is done. Then in this panel cont container, we need a margin container where we will overwrite some constants in order to make sure the text doesn't touch the edges of our container. And then we need a VBox container to hold the rows. And then next up is going to be an assortment of HBox containers where we will actually put the values inside of. So let's make two labels. Let's call this label and let's call this value. So now you can see what's going on. Um, let's also set this size of the panel container to be at least 400 pixels. And you can see that we're going to have to do some changes to the title. We want to make it center. We want to make sure that both these labels extend to the space that they can get. So we have to actually do that one by one, don't we? Yeah. Expand that one. Expand this one. And now they'll both take 50% of the available space because they both expand. Now we're going to set this alignment to the right and we can actually change the separation a little bit by overriding the constant values of the HBox container. Uh, so that's pretty good. Let's put in some realistic values. So uh, let's call this uh, gold collected. And then we can basically duplicate this a couple of times. Let's say uh, enemy slain. And uh, maybe total score. Something like that. Let's also make sure that the button aligns to the right. Like so. And we want to disable this button because we want the button to be enabled when we are finished animating the score. And we can also change the space in between these items a little bit by overriding this constant like so. And that just makes it look a little nicer. Apart from all of these control notes, we also need a audio player, audio stream player. And that will be playing this sound and that's all the notes that we need. So let's get into the scripting. What we're going to do is we're going to create a script on our control, on our root control node. We're going to call this uh, scoreboard. And we're going to remove this function and we will remove this line as well. Okay, so we will be needing to fetch a couple of nodes. Uh, first of all, we want to fetch all of the VBox containers children in order to uh, append all of the lines one by one. So let's make this a unique name and then drag it in using control and shift. Oh. Like this. Uh, then second of all, we need a reference to the audio player. So let's also do this. If you access this unique name, um, what that means is if you don't do that, when you control shift drag, you will get the entire path to the node. And if you use a unique name, if I now change the position of this node, Godot won't break because it's just looking for this unique name. As long as it's within the scope of the script, that is. Keep that in mind. 
So we need this, we need that. And that's basically all we need for now. Apart from the button, of course, because we need to be enabling the button as soon as the animation finishes. Like so. Okay. Then, first of all, we're going to be fetching all of these children. So we're going to be fetching all of the VBoxes children. The get children, which returns, if you control click, you can actually see the definition of the function. It returns an array of nodes. And then there is something I want to do that is going to be very beneficial for, uh, for you if you are designing the scoreboard. So right now, the nodes are all visible. And if I would want to start with all the nodes hidden, it would mean that we would have to do something like that for all the nodes, which means it's hard to see what a scene will look like because you're hiding the nodes in order to show them. So what I'm going to do in the script is I'm going to hide them as soon as this scene loads so that if we edit the scene, we can still see what it looks like and we can just save it like this because the script will take care of hiding everything. So let's hide everything initially. We now have all the rows. And I'm going to show you a little trick because if we loop over the rows, so over rows and rows, if we tell it to hide the rows and we play the scene, you can see that the space is not preserved. You can see that because we hide stuff, the panel sees it doesn't have any content visible, it just collapses. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to adjust the modulate, which is this, let me see, this value. We're going to be setting it to a transparent value so that it maintains the space. But we're just going to instantly set the transparency to full in order to, or at least to off initially, and then we're going to animate it to full in order to make them show up one by one. So instead of doing hide, we're going to be telling it to change the modulate to a constant that is defined in this keyword. And if you control click it, you can actually find all the constants here. And we will be using the transparent one and the white one. So transparent translates to uh, 1110, which means that the alpha will just be zero, which means it's not visible. And then white is essentially just four ones, which makes it visible in the original color. So if we save this and we play, then you can see that everything is hidden, but we preserve the space of the panel. And that's what, exactly what we want. So that's good. Then next up, we're going to be creating a tween. Our tween is create tween and a tween if we look it up if you press f1 and you search for tween you can actually see that this object has a couple of functions and this is used to interpolate in between values and we will we will see what we're going to be using a couple of these functions but you will see what i mean in a in a in a bit and initially it will animate all of it will execute all the functions that we call on this variable sequentially, but it can also be done in parallel. But originally it is all sequentially, so it's going to wait for one function to finish and then do the next one. But if you want to do multiple functions on this variable at once, then you would have to set it to be parallel, which we're not going to do, but at least you know that's an option. Uh, so what we want to do now is we want to one by one show the rows and we can do that because we have all the rows we have all the rows in the variable we're just going to loop over all the rows and then we're going to tell it that we want to tween a property and let me show you why we can't just tell it here to row modulate is color dot white because we need to call the functions on this tween object in order to make it happen at the point in time that we want it to happen, which is sequentially um, related to where the tween is at the moment. So now we show everything, this works, but we want to make it happen in the tween. And what we can also do is if you look at the tween object, it has a function called tween interval, which basically means you force the tween to wait. 
And when we initially show this, we probably want to wait a second. So tween dot tween interval, wait one second. And then after that one second, we're going to be tweening a property on the object that is the row, which is a node. The property that we want to tween is called modulate because we want to change the color. The final value is going to be color.white because that's the value that we need. And the duration is going to be zero because we want to make it happen instantly. If you play this now, all the rows will appear instantly after one second. And they do. But we want to make this, of course, happen for each row individually. So what we can do is we can set a interval. of half a second. And now all the rows should appear one after the other. First we wait a second, then we make one row appear, and then every row waits half a second. So that's pretty good. We already have something of a that resembles a score screen. And what we can do next is when we create a tween, let me, oh wait, it's still open. Let's immediately do the button because that's rather easy. A tween also has signals, and if you look it up, one of the signals is finished. And this will emit when the tween has finished all tweening, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to have to connect to this signal by doing tween.finished, which is the signal, dark connect. And we're going to make a lambda function here. And when the tween is finished, we want the button to be enabled. So button dot disabled is false. And I don't have to use tween property now because we're already hooked into the tween. If this was not inside of tween finish or the signal or whatever, then we would have to call this by using tween property. But because we're already at a point in time that is defined by the tween, we can just tell it to this or enable the button. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, so now when the, when the tween is finished, our button becomes clickable because the signal fired, we enabled the button. So the next functionality that we want to add is um, when the row appears, we want to make it so that the numbers take a static amount of time, so a set amount of time, to animate going from zero to whatever number is required. And we can do that by going into the script. And then for each row, we need to get the second child because the second child is always going to be the value for now. And we can do that by typing our value node is row.get child. And then we have to pass an index and it's one because we start at zero. So now we have the value node and then we want to animate the integer to count from zero to whatever. And we have to use the tween for that. And we can do that by calling a function called tween method. And what this does is it, it's going to interpolate a value from one value to another and call this method that we give it as a first parameter with the current value in the tweening process. And we, we will be printing some stuff in order to make it clear, but let's just um, make a function called interpolate integer. And then we want to animate it from zero to whatever variable there is right now, which we still need to get. Right now we can just make sure that we are going to make it the text value of the node that we're currently looking at. And then the duration is going to be half a second. We're going to have to define this function. We're going to be getting the current value of that tween every time this function gets called. So let's just print this. And we might be getting an error because I don't think it likes I think because we are interpolating from a value to another, we probably need to cast the text, which is a string, 
to an integer. And we should be seeing that we are getting the values that are being tweened. Yeah, so it's counting from 0 to 5. It's counting from 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4. And every time that it happens or in the process of tweening, we, we are getting that number where it's at in this function. So nothing happens right now with our notes because what we still have to do is actually tell it that when we call this function, we want to set the current value to be the text of the value node. So we need the node in this function. And we can do that by binding a variable into this function, which is going to be value node. So the first variable is always going to be the one that the tween method supplies, and then whatever we bind is going to be the secondary values, or as our secondary parameters, I should say. And let's, whenever we call this function, the text should be the current value, but we need to cast this to a string because this is a, an, an integer or a float even. So this is going to have to be a string. And I think we can just cast it by doing string. Let me, let me try that. Let's see what it does. It has, probably has to be str. There we go. Yeah. So now every time that we get into this function via the tween, we set the label text to whatever is the current value during that tween. That's pretty good. Let's also uh, play a counter sound whenever we add things up. And we already have access to the audio stream player, and all we can do is audio stream player dot play. And this is going to be—I don't know how loud it's going to be. <laughs> That is pretty loud. You can see it's weird because when we count from 0 to 5, it's being spammed. Um, apart from already sounding weird because we only want to play the sound when the audio streamer is not already playing. So let's make a function for this real quick. Play counter sound. And then we want to call this function here. And then in this function, we're going to make sure that if the audio stream player is already playing, which you can check out if we go to audio stream player, playing is a Boolean, so we can use that. If it's playing, return, we don't want to do anything. And if it's not playing, then we want to play it. So it doesn't sound like a taser every time we uh, see the score screen. Let's check it out. And you can see it's still weird because when we count from zero to five, it still sounds like we're counting from zero to one million because it's being spammed. And that is because if we enter this function or even if we log it again, you can see what I mean. It's going to uh, fire multiple times it's going to fire multiple times for the same integer so if we count from zero to five you can see we get lots of ones we get lots of twos what we want is we only want to play this sound when the integer number actually changed we don't want to play the counter sound for when this function is called with the same number 10 times we only want to play the sound if the number increased so let's see how we can do that. So in order to detect when our integer value has actually increased, we're going to create a variable at the top of the screen where we will keep an integer that we will be using for every row. And what we will be doing is we're gonna check if the current value is higher than the value we stored. And if that's true, store the current value inside of this integer and play a sound. And then we're going to be resetting this variable every time that we swap to a new row. And because we want to reset this value as part of the animation of the rows, we need to do that by using tween property because we want it to be part of the tween's timeline, so to say. This is going to be the tween value. 
We want to set it to zero, and it needs to take zero duration. We want to make it happen instantly. And then in here, we can see that if the current value is higher than the value that we stored, that's true. The tween int value is going to be current, and then we want to play a sound. And that should make it so that we only play it a couple of times. Let's set this to three. So now it will actually only play when we detect a increase in our integer value and it will be reset for every row. So that's that. Uh, next thing we're going to be looking into is how to deal with strings because I can imagine that in a scoreboard you would probably have a field that would store like a uh, a grade and it could be uh, awesome but this is not an integer so how are we going to deal with this we cannot interpolate integer when the value that is inside of this node this node's text property is a string which it always is but if it's if it consists out of letters we probably want to do something different. Um, so let's first store the value into its own uh, into its own uh, variable, and then we can use a small trick, which is if something is a string, we can actually ask the string if something is a valid integer. And this means that we exclude floats, so keep that in mind, but what we need right now is we need to make sure that we need to know if something, if a string is only consists of numbers. So we can ask it, is valid integer, I think it was, wait. Is valid integer. And if it's a valid integer, then we want to interpolate the integer. If it's not, we probably want to wait half a second. Because this animation for the integers takes half a second. If we do nothing when we see a string, we would essentially just immediately skip to the next row, which we do not want. Let's see what this looks like. Awesome. Okay. So that works. It knows it's not an integer, so we're not going to try and interpolate this string. So that's good. Um, let's make it so that instead of appearing the entire row and then doing nothing, let's make it appear on its own. So let's... First of all, we are going to set the property. And I think we can already do this like so. We don't need to hook into the tween for this. Value.modulate is color.transparent. And we want to tween it to be visible. And we can do that by doing the same thing we already do. Only thing is now we want to we don't want to do this on the value, by the way. We want to do this on the node, like so. So now when it pops up, we wait half a second, show it, wait half a second. Let's see what it looks like. And that's that. We probably want to get rid of this one to make it uh, consistent with the rest. Looks good. Um, then for the next edge case that I want to show, so showing enemy slain three, that's cool. But maybe we want to do something more graphical. Maybe we want to use images from the from the enemies' heads and then animate those in order for a little bit more uh, uh, make it look a little bit more nice. Let's see what we can do with that. So on the note part of things, we need to change one thing um let's remove 
the label on the enemy slain and let's make a uh, I think it's called a flow container yeah and this flow container we also make sure that it expands so we take half of the available space and this flow container will contain uh, texture rects that have the Godot icon just for testing purposes ignore size and let's make them Uh, maybe even 30 by 30. Okay. Let's create a couple of them because this is how we want to show it. And this flow container will take care of the uh, spacing. So that's really good. And let's also adjust the constant on the flow container. And this will make them stack. So it will, uh, it looks a little nicer when we animate them. It also makes sure that we have more space to show more enemies when we have such a small uh, panel container. Okay, so that's the node parts of things. If we play this now, it's going to crash because we are expecting a label and we're fetching, a, we're fetching the text property every, from, the, from the second child in every HBox container. And if we encounter this one, it's going to break. So we need to make sure that before we actually do anything with this value, we have to do a type check. So if value node is a flow container, we want to do flow container stuff. Else, we want to do all of this. Oh, and we also need to get the value because we only want to get the value if we know for sure that it's a it's not a flow container. Like so. Okay, so now we know that if it's a flow container. Just pass and this should not break it anymore because we dodge trying to do this when it's a flow container let's check it out yeah so it just it just skips uh, we don't want to skip though what we want is we want to animate all these cards showing up just like we do with the integers we're going to do that with the uh, enemy heads so to say so in order to do that we first need to get all the children of the flow container. So our children. This will get all the children. And then for each child, we want to uh, hide them. And we can just always do this without a tween because it doesn't really matter. Hiding them is always going to be the same. So that's good. And now we want to tween these heads to show them in sequence. But we cannot do that with nodes. We have to do this with integers. And we will be using the size of this array as an integer to interpolate toward. We will be using the tween method. So we will tween dot tween method. We're going to write our own method for this. Let's call it, um, I don't know, uh, set visibility. Visibility. And then we want to animate it from zero, from zero to children.size, which is the size of the array, which means we get the size of, or the amount of all the texture rects in our flow container. Now let's make it take one second. Now it's going to whine about this because we don't have that function yet. Let's make that right now. We get our current value. And we probably also want to... Um, well, we first get a current value. Let's, let's make sure that we are able to see what's going on. Um, and we also need the entire array of children. And we need that because we will be selecting what child to show based on if we see that this value has changed. So we're going to be using the same tween int value in order to detect a change in the integer, in order to select a certain child in the children array, ch children array, sorry, and then make it show. And that will look like this. Um, so we get the current value. We get also the children. And if we detect that the current value 
is higher than the tween value. Uh, what was it called again? Tween int value, which is the value that we store on the top of the script. We will set the tween int value to current because we don't want to do this twice for the same child. Let's also play a counter sound because when a head shows, we want to play a counter sound. And then we will be selecting the child using the current value minus one because the current value we want to select the first child which is zero but we only detect one as a first change in our visibility so we have to offset it by one and we want to set that color modulate to white and we don't have to tween method here because we are already inside of a method that is being used by a tween method so that's why i can just tell it to set a certain modulate Let's uh, see what it looks like. That's pretty good. As a last little extra, maybe it's nice to include a, a horizontal separator to separate our grade from our score so that we actually show a sum up of score and then you get a grade which summarizes all of your score. And if you want to separate them, there's a node called age separator and we can put that over here so that it actually separates our grade from our score and if we run this now since we get all of the children from the vbox container it will crash because this does not have any of the properties that we want to animate and in order to fix that we can adjust the way we get this value because we want to the rows over here are basically all the children of the vbox container and we want to exclude this one and we can do that by telling it to reassign itself and then filtering out everything that is a H separator. And we're gonna do that by type, check, by type checking. And this takes a method, which is going to be a lambda. I'm just going to take a row because we're looping over the rows and we're returning it when not row is H separator. So now we get all the children, we filter out the H separators, and then we still continue on as normal. Nice. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and uh, I hope to see you in the next one.